it's time for another staycation. No, no, no. This is an actual vacation. We're in California. Right, right. We're staying at the Disneyland Hotel. And it's so cool. Hey, ma'am, fam, we're staying at the Disneyland Hotel for another Resort Stay video, the original Disney Hotel. The Disneyland Hotel opened up just a few months after Disneyland, so it's full of nostalgia and concept art. And as a Disney nerd, I'm geeking out a little bit. Neither of us have ever stayed here before, so super excited to bring you along with us. We're going to tour the room, the food, see it all. Everything. Look how pretty it is. Honestly, I'm loving the red carpet. Well, blue carpet, I guess. Purple. It's purple? It's the D100. The color is purple. Noted. Close enough, though. I nailed it. This is so pretty. <gasps> Look. I will never oh be upset gosh. when they acknowledge the Alice comedies. They've got this, like, photo cut out of the Alice comedies and a young Walt. Oh, Walter. All oh, the Disney nerds are going to go crazy in here. That's us. Okay, first note, the lobby is absolutely stunning. And if I'm right, and I am right, some of these chairs are teacups, and Molly's already found the teacup chairs. I like this teacups more than the real teacups because I'm less nauseous now. Yeah, there's nothing to spin, although I guess it does mirror the little knob in the center so there. Cute. This is adorable. <gasps> are those John Hinch stars on the light? They sure are. They're actually perfect though. So John Hench was an Imagineer, he's an architect. He did Space Mountain and some of the castles and things. And he would draw his stars similar to this, but imperfectly. And they actually made a glow cube for D100 in the style of John Hench's stars with the one short uh, leg of the star. Oh, the detail here is amazing. We're gonna nerd out, aren't we? Yeah. We just got checked in and our room isn't ready yet, so we're going to explore the lobby, a little bit of the hotel, and uh, maybe even go to Disneyland. Obviously, we're going to Disneyland, if only to show how close it is from here for science. Yes, for, for science. First thing I'm seeing, we've got Small World gifts and sundries here. Looks like we've just got a couple of merchandise items, but mostly it's like snacks, toiletries, sunscreen, things you might have forgotten but I love all the Mary Blair details. Look at it, it's all up at the top of the shelves. I know. It is worth noting that you can get your ears embroidered here at Small World Sundry, so that's neat. It may be shorter and faster here to get them done as opposed to in the park, so that's a good tip. All right, well, this is a huge, just feelings, emotional blast looking at this wall of all these photos. It's got pictures of Walt and Mary Blair, I see, Sherman Brothers. And then it looks like famous people that have come to Disneyland before. Wait, look, it's the small world's opening day ceremony. Oh my gosh. I talked about this in one of my secrets videos, but all these kids brought water from their country around the world and they all dumped it into small world in the water, which is so cute. Shall we explore the Fantasia shop? I think we shall. We away. Oh, I'm sorry. We have asked. <gasps> Do I need these? Wait, you want Little Mermaid ears? I don't love Little Mermaid, but they're it's, new Little Mermaid. Wait, that's a it's trident Hallie on there? Yeah, and it's Halle Bailey Mermaid. All the new Little Mermaid merch came out. I think you should. I did have mermaid ears and I gave them to my niece because I'm the coolest aunt ever. I'm jockeying uh -huh. for number one spot. Um, so I gave her my mermaid ears, so I should get these. That math makes sense. I really do like this collection, maybe a bit more than I should. Look at everybody on there. I know, I love this collection. They have it in Disney World too. Of course, it's branded a little bit differently, but I love the colors. I've bought way too much from it, <laughs> including this shirt. I kind of want the long sleeve though. Disneyland is a good place to have a long sleeve. A Alan. Now, wait a minute. There's a tank top. <clears throat> You've convinced me. That's cute. I absolutely adore the Fantasia details at the top of the store. It's all around, but the broomsticks with the pails of water. Are they broomsticks or mops? I think they're rooms, but that doesn't make sense why they'd have water. You see why I'm confused now? I've not stopped to think about it literally ever. Me neither. And now I am. Now it's all I'm going to think about for the rest of the day. What, what else have we gotten wrong? I don't know that we're wrong. I just think we haven't, haven't thought about it. Stop to think about it. Let us know in the comments, mops or brooms. Regardless of if it's a mop or a broom, this Mickey's adorable. Old school Mickey, I love him. Mm. I also love this Disneyland Hotel exclusive collection right here. You've got water Wait, bottles, some shirts, the robe is cute, the mug. 
oh my gosh, do I need another mug? No. But look at this cute mug with like vintage looking 50s Mickey and Minnie on it. I mean, the happiest point, day on earth. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to have another cabinet for mugs, aren't we? Yeah, and there's a stemless wine glass too that says the same thing. Oh, wow. Look at this artwork. Her Ryman concept art. Some of the first drawings down of Disneyland. They have the original of that one in Disneyland and Guest Relations. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And you look at the colors and, ugh, I just love it. Wait a minute. Is this a case of all of the old merch that used to be sold? Yeah, it looks like this is just a variety of... Mm, some name tags. Maps, plushes, merchandise, games, all kinds of stuff. Look at that Nightmare Donald Duck hat. That, uh, uh-uh, nope, don't wanna look at that again. <laughs> look at Winnie the Pooh, Grad Night 1971, oh my gosh. Look at that Oliver and Company pin there, Molly. <gasps> Never gets any love, I love that movie. My first cat growing up was named Oliver after that movie. Why are they doing Donald so dirty? I don't know, but I think it's funny that like his body is plush, but his head is plastic. Wait, wait, look at this Mickey mask and look at the child's eyes inside of it. I feel like it, if I look at it too long, it will take my soul. Well, my soul's gone. I've been staring at it for a while. Look, there's old ticket books. Is that a full one or are they missing the A? I think they're missing A, which is weird because normally you'd be missing E. When Disneyland opened, they had these ticket books that you paid for in addition to your general admittance to the park. And the E tickets were the better rides. They were the fancy rides of the day. And the A tickets were like the least fancy rides. And you'd give them your ticket book. So it's really rare to find a ticket book that is complete. And it's really weird that the A would be missing. Wow. I'm just feeling a lot of emotions. I could stand here and look at this for like an hour. <laughs> look at this old clock. All right, all right we, gotta, we gotta go explore. Okay, before we do any more exploring, I think what's most important is... Coffee. Yeah, coffee. The Coffee House is our first of our dining locations here at Disneyland Hotel. And as the name might suggest, it's a coffee house. Pretty petite in here. They've got some pastries and bagels and then a variety of coffees, both iced and hot. So this is my new favorite place at the Disneyland Hotel. This? Yep. No, it's all the artwork, but this is close. They have shaky Jamaica in there. So yeah, that really is my favorite place at the Disneyland Hotel. Really? More than the monorail pool? Kind of forgot there was a monorail pool. The Disneyland Hotel is divided into three towers based on lands in Disneyland. Go figure. They are Frontierland, Fantasyland, and Adventureland. Which begs the question, what tower do you want to stay in? I want to stay in Fantasy Tower. I want to stay in Adventure Tower. Well, we'll find out soon enough. And here's that famous monorail pool. Oh my God, it's Ooh. so cool. These are very cool pools and they are named after the old ticket system. You've got the E-ticket pool, the D-ticket pool, and of course the famous monorail slides. Also worth noting back behind the monorail slides, that building that's under construction, that is going to be the Disney Vacation Club tower of hotel rooms coming to Disneyland later this year. So maybe we'll figure out a reason to come check those out too. Okay, headed in to explore the Frontierland Tower. What are my eyeballs looking at right here? Whoa, it's Big Thunder. At a quarter inch to an inch scale. Well, that's just cool. This is awesome. I guess I didn't realize how big this ride is. I'm really thrown by the scale of the mountain right quarter now. Quarter inch is an inch. So that means anything that's this big on the scale is this big in real life? That can't be right. We're doing some quick math, everybody. If only Dr. Strange was Qu here. Quarter inch to one foot. Quarter inch to a foot. Okay. I was like, that would not make that tower very tall. My, my yeah. apologies. No, no, no. I read and ran. If anyone understands math around here, it is me. So I was happy to help. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. Most importantly, I think Dynamite Goat is in the model. He's oh, he right is, there. Look at him. I love him. This is so cool. Look at all of these tiny scale model folks enjoying their day in Frontierland. They're having such a nice day. This guy's just leaning. He's waiting for his family to get off the ride. These people have a baby and they can't bring the baby on the ride. 
this guy's kid just wants to go back to Galaxy's Edge, but Dad is like, can we please go to Haunted Mansion just for five seconds? Tough decisions, Dad. They look like they're having fun, though. Well, they're about to be the best part of the ride. That's true. They're all excited to meet Dynamite Goat, for sure. I love Dynamite Goat so much. This is really cool. I also love that in each of the different towers, we were in the Fantasyland Tower before, and the ground was all bright colors and Mary Blair style artwork. And now it looks like the rocks in Frontierland with the kind of reds and oranges and browns. Even the furniture is different with the different kind of Western colors and patterns. The Ottomans are still Mickey's though. Well, that's important everywhere. One thing that I'm glad to keep seeing, and I hope we keep seeing in Adventureland Tower, is the concept art that you have here for Frontierland. I also like that over by the bathrooms, they've got posters of different attractions in each land, and then in the bathroom itself, those posters, all the wallpaper. So the theming extends to the restrooms. Everywhere is themed. It's the happiest restrooms on Earth. Okay, well, I'm having a Disney nerd moment. So this is Cascade Falls and Old Faithful, which used to be a prominent feature of the Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland, which was replaced by Big Thunder Mountain and now lives here? Yeah, I think it's amazing that they moved literal pieces of an attraction to this hotel. I'm nerding out big time. This is very cool. Come on, old faithful. Just... Explode. I was going to say spurt. Explode is way better. Spurt is not a good word. <laughs> spurt is a bad word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, up the hill there is Trader Sam's. We'll be there tonight. Absolutely. We will get our tiki on. Speaking getting of... tiki on? Yeah. Tiki. I'm going to tiki you to Trader Sam's. Okay. <laughs> and uh, speaking of tiki, let's go look at Adventure Tower now. Are you also going to tiki me to Adventure Tower? Yes, I'm tikiing you there right now. It's not even a verb. <laughs> it's going to be unbelievable because there's leaves and palm trees all right well we're turning off the camera now Ooh, jungle cruise stuff all right well now i'm convinced i definitely want to stay here look at these models of jungle cruise look at the head of a giraffe oh well that's just this is awesome i didn't expect to learn so much look at these little models of the gorillas listen i don't know a lot but i know that you shouldn't hold a gun that way <laughs> More concept art. Look at the bananas. Yep. <laughs> the bananas. Also, the carpet has changed. Now we're in a very tiki feeling. Oh, Walter, Walt. Walter. Walt and the Tiki Birds. Also, we're listening to Jungle Cruise or Jungle Book background music now. And the even the light fixtures have changed. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> Look at this little patio out here that's so pretty with all the tropical plants. Hmm. Would you call it? A tropical hideaway? Yes, I would. Well, because our room isn't ready, we're going to go and uh, take a quick walk through downtown Disney to Disneyland. Yes, the parks are incredibly close to Disneyland. It's one of my favorite things about coming here versus Walt Disney World is that if you stay at one of the Disneyland hotels or plenty of good neighbor hotels, you are literally a few minutes from stepping foot into the parks. So steps away. Let's go. And in just over eight minutes, we have made it to the entrance of Disneyland. Ah. Ah. Look at how pretty it is. And the trains there. There's nothing like walking into Disneyland. It just feels so magical. Yeah. Also, they're playing Spaceship Earth music, which is weird. It is, isn't it? They also played Harmonious on the walk over, and I was like, too soon. Too soon, for sure. But as you can see, Disneyland, it's a quick jaunt away from the Disneyland Hotel, right through downtown Disney. You can also take the monorail from kind of the entrance of downtown Disney directly into Tomorrowland. We are headed into Disneyland now to shoot some stuff for another video. And you know what? Just have some fun. Yeah. So we'll see you in a little bit when our room's ready. Bye. Bye. Do you think when we're always open? Mm. Yeah. Toontown is. Oh!
Well, we made it back after a lovely day in Disneyland. The weather is so perfect. And it was warm during the day, a little breeze now. Take notes, Florida. I wish. Take notes. But we are back at the Disneyland Hotel. It is all aglow with the torches at Trader Sam's calling our name. But first, we're going to go check out our room, do a little room tour. And guess which tower we're staying in? I don't want to. Fantasy. Okay, I owe you a drink. Let's go look at the room. Okay, first of all, look at this Mary Blair hardwood. Okay, this is just a bit extra and I love it. Um, That is so cute. Oh, it also has like Sword in the Stone and Snow White and Peter Pan's hat. Okay, that is so cute. 2710. Walking into a new hotel room is always like a weird adventure. Like, I don't that? know what I think I'm going to find, but... Probably a hotel room. Probably a bed, <laughs> if I had to guess. Looks like we have another accessibility room. They really like giving us those for some reason. <gasps> Look at that headboard. Oh my God, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, wow. That's enormous too. Do you think they'll notice if I steal that pillow? Uh, they'll certainly notice it after you say it out loud on this video. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's the coolest thing ever. With the music too. Get a photo of Walt as well. Well, my heart is full that's of magic. Uh, no, not, where are the lights? I think this is a light too. Oh my gosh, more Walt. Look, he's on the directory. He's everywhere. It was just one of those where the light switch had to be on. Yeah. But here is the room. Let's do a... Uh, rapid fire room tour? Rapid fire room tour. Rapid fire room tour. TM. TM. Patent pending. Okay, that's better. We haven't even submitted the paperwork. Well, we'll get to it. So this is a standard room. Well, it's supposed to be. I booked a standard room. It cost $4.25 with a discount they were doing right now for the springtime and for Magic Key holders. Um, typically, they start around the $400 range uh, in the off peak season. And then in the peak season, I saw rooms upwards of $800, $900. And again, this is just a standard room. So you can, of course, do a deluxe room with a better view. Although I feel like we got a really good view. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe we are not in a standard room, but we paid for a standard room. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, well, wait a minute. We have both the pools, the monorail slide, and Trader Sam's. This is very pretty. Yeah, big fan. Wait, oh. there's Goofy's Kitchen right down there. We're going there for breakfast tomorrow. I cannot wait. Um, yes, but this is a standard room, or we paid for a standard room. I'm giving you pricing for a standard room. Of course, there are deluxe rooms, and there are a variety of suites as well. So it's definitely on par with a Disney World deluxe Resort pricing. Um, it's not the most expensive Disneyland hotel, though. That would be the Grand Californian, which is kind of like the Wilderness Lodge, and it's a little bit closer to the parks. We will stay there at some point for a different staycation. But for now, rapid fire room tour. Here we go. Patent pending. Mm hmm. Paperwork submitted soon, maybe. I'm trying to get it done. Starting with the bathroom. Mm hmm. Huge, massive. There's a door there. I ran into it. Yep. <gasps> Look at the Dumbo artwork. It's so cute. Are Every you seeing the Mickey gloves? <gasps> oh my gosh. Why is everything the cutest thing I've ever seen? Also the Mickey handles. Also the door closed by itself. Did that ghost follow us home from the Haunted Mansion? The ghost will follow you home. There's Mickey handles in the shower too. Also Walt here, neat and ready on the little toiletry stand. We love. Hold this, please. I must yes. test the most important thing in the bathroom. The, wait, the most important thing in the bathroom? The hair dryer. Oh. This is maybe where they're going to lose us. There is a ghost. In here. It's got to be. Where's um, Max's spirit box when you need it? What? Mm. On a scale of one to 10. You know, it's going to be a four. If it had a diffuser attachment, I might give it like a six, but it's a four. But you know what? This room had to have a flaw somewhere, I suppose. Bring your own blow dryer if you need something better than that. Got it. I have so yeah. much hair. I, I, I was own. definitely talking to you. Thank uh -huh. you. 100%. Closet space. Oh, it's actually pretty sizable. You can see we've already put our things in here. Nice extra pillows, blankets, <gasps> covers. Robes. Oh, beautiful robes. Oh, I'm wearing this later. 
<laughs> and, and because we are in an accessibility room, you'll see that the hanger is going to be a bit lower. There's also an ironing board, iron, and a safe in here. And to the room. Obviously, we have the gorgeous headboard and bed itself. We also have, I mean, a pretty large space. Yeah, definitely pretty sizable. Over here, we've got a wet bar with, oh my god, look at these coasters. They're like vintage Disneyland Hotel. I will oh. be taking these as well. Uh, oh. Okay. They're, they're cardboard. They're for you to take. I also like that the light, when it's on, you can see the Mickeys, but when you turn it off, you can't really see the Mickeys. I think hmm. that's another cute little detail. They also have the upgraded television set as well, which is nice to see. What's in the wet bar? We have a little mini fridge, pretty decent space for leftovers. You got your Keurig, your condiment kits, some coffee and tea. And then a little desk if you'd like to pen a friend a letter. With your uh, wonderful hidden Mickey, not hidden Mickey, you're just Mickey Mickey, lamp. And a little chair for some Luxuriating. You know, they're uh, Danny Zuko. Nice collar pop. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I know it. You know what I love? I just love how much Walt is represented here. What are you... What are you... Oh. Ah. You like the headboard? Can we get one? Sure. <laughs> I know how to make this. First you gotta figure out where to get it or how to make it. No, it's got it on lock. This is definitely doable. Just call me Bob Vila. So anyway, what are your thoughts on the room? I love it. This is an awesome room. This is a beautiful hotel. And while I normally recommend staying at a good neighbor hotel or somewhere that's equal amount of walking to get to the parks. It's the beauty of staying at Disneyland. There's something pretty magical about staying here. After putting in a mobile order, we are now on our way to Tongaroa Terrace. I am sincerely sorry if I've mispronounced that, but that is where we're going to grab our dinner before testing our luck at Trader Sam's tonight. I really like the layout of this hotel, how it's kind of like a horseshoe shape with the pool and the dining in the middle. And then it'll eventually be more of a circle once I open that DVC tower. But it makes it very easy and it makes it so that no one tower is like super far away from the food, which is something I hate about some of the bigger hotels at Walt Disney World. Yeah, everything's equidistant. Tongaroa Terrace is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and is a Polynesian American fusion style cuisine. So you'll find things like standard hamburgers on the menu, but you will also see things like poke bowls with ahi tuna. Other menu features include the famous panko crusted long beans, sweet and spicy wings, a Hawaiian platter, which looks very tasty, as well as things like the poo-poo platter. They even have tonkatsu ramen here, which is a pork-based broth with wavy noodles and, oh, pork belly, okay. We also went ahead and put in our name for Trader Sam's, which is the original tiki bar here at Disneyland. It can get quite a long wait, so recommend putting your name in and they'll send you a text when it's available. If you don't want to wait for the inside of Trader Sam's, you can go here to the bar at uh, Tanganoa Terrace and Tangaroa Terrace. Nailed it. And you can order drinks to go and sit out on this beautiful patio or there's places by fire around the resort. You also can get Dole Whip here to go, which is important information. Alan's unpacking our delicious feast. And one thing I was a little confused about, so I clarified with the cast members, is that uh, the terrace is mobile order or to-go food and they'll pack it all up for you if you want to eat it out here at your pool deck or in your room or what have you. If you'd like a server, Trader Sam's over on the other side of the terrace, if you say you want to sit inside or outside, they have a similar menu, a lot of the same things, um, and they can bring you it with an actual server. So two different options to get the delicious looking food. They also had some grab and go things. They've got great looking coffee for the morning. These are one of my favorite Disneyland foods ever. I cannot wait. Our feast has been unpacked. It has arrived. We are ready to dig in. So here we have the Hawaiian platter. I got it with the teriyaki chicken thighs. We also have our pork gyoza, panko crusted long beans with a very happy recipient of the long beans, as well as the little Jim salad with poached chicken. Okay, let's dig in. Let's not let's not stand on ceremony here. Again, these are the famous panko crusted long beans. They've been around at Trader Sam's for a very long time, um, and they come with a togarashi aioli, which is a Japanese spice blend. And if memory serves me correct, these are one of my favorite Disneyland snacks. 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh my god. They're so good. Oh yeah, I can confirm. They are so good. They're crispy and crunchy on the outside because that panko breading, but they still have the nice kind of tender bean flavor in the middle, similar to a green bean. I love this aioli, and what I love about food in Disneyland is it's often actually spicy since a lot of locals eat here, and they have a heavy influence of Asian cuisine in this area. So this is awesome, delicious, my favorite thing on the menu. Even if you just come to Trader Sam's or the Terrace, a Disneyland cat. Sorry, I got distracted because like wild cats are a thing in Disneyland and it's a I feel like I'm lucky now that I saw it. Anyway, these are delicious. They're one of my favorite Disneyland foods. Excellent spice, excellent crunch, simple deliciousness, no notes. I'm very happy to be eating them right meow. Oh, I get it, because of the cat. The Disneyland I, cat. Yeah, I meant that. Oh. Clever. And I picked up the pork gyoza, which is a gochugang aioli, and it has an unagi sauce. Unagi. Unagi. All right, let's do this. One dunk, one bite. Those are the rules. Oh, that looks so good. I, I'm just in a really good place right now, okay? And <clears throat> this made it better. Let's talk about the pork bun itself. Crispy on the bottom. So it's been cooked really well, then steamed all the way through. The eel sauce is delicious, and the gochujang has just a little bit of spice with some slight sweetness on the end of it. Oh, yeah. yum. Uh-huh, right? Yum. The pork cooked and seasoned wonderfully. I taste a little bit of pineapple in there, almost as if it had a little bit of a pineapple marinade throughout. Not overly salted, as sometimes pork uh, gyoza buns are. Yeah. These are delicious, A+. plus. This is the Hawaiian platter. Now you could either get marinated short rib or teriyaki chicken thigh, but I wanted to go with chicken thigh. Uh, it's served with jasmine rice, a tangy slaw, and a macaroni salad. And it looks delicious, so I'm very enthused about all of this. This food is really nice for being quick service. And right? That's clearly because it shares the kitchen and shares the menu with Trader Sam's, which is like, bar, like a full bar mm -hmm. with a server, but you didn't this finish bar food, and I thought you said barf, and I was like, that is not barf. How no, dare I, I you? I was going to say bar food, but it's like better than bar food. Right. Okay. Let's do this individually, then all together, right? Let's start with rice. I put a little bit of soy sauce on top. Oh, it's very sticky, which I like. Okay. That actually tastes like fresh rice. It doesn't taste like rice that's been sitting out or made a long time ago. Very light. Yeah, big fan. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was worried about the chicken being dry, but because it's chicken thigh, it's retained that moisture, very flavorful, crispy on the exterior, excellent glaze on the outside, not super salty, not super sweet, big fan. It's just a perfect compliment to this dish. Now the slaw, I gotta be honest, not my favorite slaw. It's mainly because there's a lot of, it's mayo based, and there's a little bit more mayo flavor that I like. I typically like my slaws a bit more acidic than this. That's not saying it's bad, but just be aware if you're a texture person or you don't like the flavor of mayo, this might not be for you. I actually don't get the tang that I wish was there. Maybe I just didn't get the right bite. Nope, there's just no tang. Now what I'm most excited about and why I saved it for last, the macaroni salad. Please be good. I don't know that spice. I do know that spice. Again, mayo-based, and there is a slow burn pepper flake to it. It is a cold macaroni salad, not a warm macaroni salad. Well, that's just macaroni and cheese then. I've had warm macaroni salad, but then I also grew up in the South, so... Warm macaroni salad? That sounds disgusting. I didn't hate it. <laughs> the veggies in here are fresh, very tasty. Honestly, I think my favorite thing on this dish is going to be the chicken. If I had to rank it, it'd be... Chicken, macaroni, salad, rice, slaw. How does it taste together? Good here, good here. That looks challenging with chopsticks. It is, but we got it. We made it happen. Come on. Just a tasty, well-balanced dish. Now I understand the presence of mayo. It cut some of the acidity of the sauce. 
Don't mind me. I'm just going to chow down. And I, because I've been in Disneyland already for a week with my family eating as many fried delicacies as possible, got a salad. Because my body would like a vegetable and not just ones that are fried. Anyway, this is the Little Gem Salad. Uh, it comes with either salmon or chicken. It's got uh, gem leaves, candied macadamia nuts, avocado, queso fresco, poached chicken, and then two different dressings. This one is a pog vinaigrette. That's a famous Disney drink. It's passion fruit, orange guava. So that's a vinaigrette. And then it also has a creamy miso dressing. And the cast member said to dump it all on there together and it's delicious. Assembly time. Dog. Miso. Oh, we're going with the shake approach. Brave of you. I love a shake and salad. I really don't like it when salads are like not dressed evenly. We are putting a lot of vigor into this, so. I almost lost all half of it. <laughs> Saw it pop open there a little bit. Saw my life flash before my eyes. Try to get a bite with a candied macadamia nut, which is really what sold me on this dish because I love macadamia nuts. Come here. Is it avoiding you? It hates me. Okay. Let's start with the bad news. The chicken is really bland. It is just plain poached chicken. It's cooked well, um, but I wish it had more seasoning. I actually really wish it had the teriyaki sauce that Alan's chicken has. I think that would go really well with all the other flavors. But besides that, the lettuce is really fresh and crispy. I love the candied macadamia nuts. I love the dressing. This pog vinaigrette is awesome. Um, so it's good to have a salad, but honestly, I would rather eat the long beans and some of the other snacky things. That would be my recommendation or maybe something a little more unique, but it is fresh and tasty. Since we've still got some time on Trader Sam's inside, we're gonna grab a round of drinks out here to have on the terrace. Taking a look at the signature drink menu, they do have some that they have in Walt Disney World, like the uh Oa, that's the one that comes with cinnamon so it can be on fire, the Krakatoa Punch, the Hippopotamai Mai Tai, and all the no booze brews. Those are the same along with a few others, but they've also got some that you cannot get in Disney World, which is the ones I'm looking at. We've got the Tango Roa Cooler, which is made with gin, the Zambezi Sour, which has bourbon, the Shipwreck on the Rocks, also bourbon, a big one of my favorites. Um, they can actually do that one as a secret menu in Disney World, if you ask nicely. A couple of other ones, the Hala Kaliki, which is rum and lemon. Piranha Pool, that's a frozen beverage. Decisions, decisions. Okay, drinks have arrived. I got the Tangaroa Cooler. This is Hendrix Gin, Orgio Syrup, which is an almond syrup. Falernum, Angostura Bitters, and Grapefruit and Lemon Juice. A tropical gin drink, not something you, uh, or at least not something I've heard of a lot, but I'm excited to try it. Wow. Here's the thing. This drink isn't going to be for everybody. I think you have to be a gin lover. I adore gin. You get the spicy herbaceousness of the gin after you get the acidity of the grapefruit and lemon juice, both of which are incredibly acidic citrus beverages. This is a sharp drink. Uh, that cuts through any of the richness that you might have had during the, your entire day, right? So this is going to be acidic, but very refreshing. If you like a tart drink that's herby, this is for you. Um, but it's not for everybody. Just know that going into it. And I grabbed the Shipwreck on the Rocks, which has been a personal favorite of mine when I come visit Disneyland. It's Maker's Mark bourbon with agave uh, and freshly muddled lemon and mint. So it's kind of like a tropical bourbon drink. Also, I love these. Little picks. So <laughs> cute. Ooh, that is so yummy. I love how refreshing this is because, again, bourbon isn't a liquor you normally associate with tropical drinks. That's typically rum, maybe tequila, maybe vodka, but really not bourbon. But I'm not really a rum drinker, and I like that this drink is not sweet. It's refreshing because of the lemon and the mint, and you really can taste that bourbon but it still feels tropical. It still feels like I'm in theme with the location. If you're a bourbon drinker, give this one a whirl. All right, it's time. We've but been called back. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Yeah. Alice in Wonderland reference. Not really applicable to Trader Sam's, but... I was confused as to why we're getting Alice in the... We're singing yeah. Fantasy Tower, so... Oh. It works. 
Yeah, we're going to Trader Sam's, long story short. I can't wait. <laughs> Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar is a Disneyland tradition. Now, one did open several years ago at this point in the Polynesian Resort and Walt Disney World, but Trader Sam's started here. Trader Sam's was the head salesman of the jungle on the Jungle Cruise, so it is similar to vibes to the Jungle Cruise where the bartenders and servers are going to be funny and mess with you and certain drinks when you order something, something funny happens around the bar. It's very kinetic. It's very fun. Uh, it's just a darn good time. They've got great tiki drinks. We obviously already saw the menu, but I'm excited to go inside because it's just one of those Disneyland things, you know? Welcome inside the world famous Trader Sam's, world famous for being world famous, I assume. And I love looking around in here for different Easter eggs and little details. Like for example, there's a coconut up there and it says Game Ball Playoffs 37. Oh, we've got Skip on a megaphone with the orange bird. I looked around a little bit early. Oh, look, that anchor says for sale, price sinking, see Sam. Huh. Over here in that corner, there's a banjo and it says banjo lessons. Contact H. Goff. That's a nod to Harper Goff, an Imagineer who was known for playing the banjo. So that's funny. And on that sign right there, they actually have a picture of the uh, ship that got stuck at Typhoon Lagoon, the Typhoon Tilly. So I'm sure there's some kind of note about what happened with that situation. But um, take a look around while you're in here because you will probably see something that will make you laugh. Don't cry. I wonder if there's a Joe Rody knot in here. It's just one big earring. Yeah, exactly. That's no shade. It's where his power comes from. I agree. I That's where the creativity comes from. Yeah. And his brain. Mostly the earring, though. I have not had this one in a long time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, what's happening? Oh, he's another. Oh, oh, oh. Not again. Not again. Everybody, let's go. Oh, 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 Why did this keep happening? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> You know, the first thing we do when we come to Trader Sam's is to upset the tiki gods because we ordered the uh, Oa, which is Bacardi Superior Rum, Meyer's Original Dark Rum, orange juice, passion fruit, guava, pineapple, and grapefruit with palernum, cinnamon, and fresh lime juice. Now it is made for two, so that's why we have two straws. Um, or one person that really believes in themselves and isn't driving later. You're describing me to a T. <laughs> uh, this one, like many glasses at Trader Sam's, is served in a souvenir cup, uh, but you don't have to keep it. So don't let that dissuade you from ordering something. But you can, and there's collectible ones. That's a whole thing. Oh, I just took a sip. Are you ready? Ooh. Okay, so who wants to talk about the drink? You know, I don't remember you listing banana as one of the juices, but I am getting banana. I bet it's the cinnamon interacting with the different citrus juices. I'm just saying a monkey would like this. This is one of the most quintessentially, almost stereotypically tropical drinks that could have ever existed. It's pretty good though, and you can definitely taste the alcohol, which is my issue with a lot of tiki drinks. They're way too sweet for me, and I can only taste juice, but I can definitely taste booze. So, goodbye. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Everybody in the comment section is like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? I'm like, no. Goodbye, cool world. Goodbye, cool world. Take me to the window. We are doomed. Goodbye. But seriously, our hotel room's like 50 steps that way. It's really good, though. I, I'm very impressed. I haven't been to Trader Sam's in a long time either coast. And uh, this is delightful, and it's so fun. It's so it fun. Is. Who doesn't love pissing off a tiki god? And getting spritzed with a, a spray bottle. Like, a, like a, a dog who's done something wrong. Like a cat, you're trying to not claw on things. A couple more Easter eggs I've spotted. 
very fun. Over here on the wall, you've got a nod to Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, which is where the attraction takes place in Disneyland. You're not supposed to look at the Eye of Mara, and there's a note from Sala, and then on the map, all the eyes have been crossed out from the drawing of the temple. There's also a bunch of other nods to SEA, which is the Society for Explorers and Adventurers. It's a fictional society that runs deep within Disney lore and includes Indiana Jones, characters from the Adventurers Club, characters from Jungle Cruise, etc. And then my favorite thing I've seen so far is on the top of the bar, there is the jar that Carl and Ellie were using to collect coins to save money to go to Paradise Falls. And, uh, were they also members of SCA, you think? Carl and Ellie? Yeah. Maybe. They, you know, never, they never got to go. That's what's so sad. Okay, well now I'm going to cry. You know what we should have gotten, though? What? We should have gotten the shipwreck here. We should have, because it does cool things when you order it here. They have that ship in a bottle, and we can watch it wreck. Yeah, we saw it earlier. It was cool. Lessons learned. Next time. Lessons learned. Well, we had a great day at Disneyland and exploring the Disneyland Hotel. I am in love with this hotel, but we got to get to bed because we have to get up early to have breakfast with Goofy. Yeah, we do. Plus, I got to watch the headboard at least 75 more times. Good night. Good morning. Morning. That was the most comfortable hotel bed I've ever slept in. I'm going to steal the pillows. Or, Not just the decorative ones. Yeah, we could just find out the brand name. Oh, perhaps. Any oozle, we're off to breakfast. Yes, we are going to Goofy's Kitchen, which is one of my favorite character experiences I've ever had. Granted, it's been like 10 years since we've eaten there, but I'm hoping it still is wonderful. So, Let's go. Goofy's Kitchen is open for breakfast into what I would call a brunch period, and then as well for dinner. It is character dining, and the last time that I was here, it was a random assortment of characters, kind of a smorgasbord, a potpourri, if you will. So I don't know who's expected to be here this time, but I'm excited. I bet Goofy will be here. That seems like a fair guess. If I had to guess, Goofy would in fact be here. If you were a betting lady. If I was a betting lady. For adults, Goofy's Kitchen costs $62 with gratuity and tax. For kids, it's around $36. And you'll be paying a couple dollars more for those dinnertime prices, which is a fairly standard pricing for a character dining experience. We have checked in and are just waiting for our names to be called. We did get our picture with Goofy. He's greeting folks at the front of his kitchen. He's very musically talented. Hi, Goofy! Oh my gosh, hi! How are you? You look so nice! Have you been cooking? You've been making lots of stuff. Look at this. Look at your kitchen. A lot of, a lot sugar. of sugar. Very important. Did you make peanut butter pizza today? Peanut butter jelly pizza? I'm very excited about it. <laughs> You're so talented. Yay. Thank you, Goofy. And we have a photo pass cast member there, and those photos are included whether or not you purchase Genie Plus or have photo pass or anything, you get your pictures from this event. So make sure to get a card or link it to your account. You might have been asking yourself, Molly, why would this be one of your favorite character meals? And I will tell you, it's because the food is awesome in my memory, and it is truly breakfast and lunch. Yeah, I mean, where else can you have oatmeal and clam chowder next to each other on a buffet line? I hope we don't mix those two things up. Oh, God. Anyway, let's start with the boring stuff. Salad. salad. That was unplanned. Well done. We've got a salad bar and then mini bagels and cream cheese and then some pre-made salads as well as a charcuterie board. Don't forget your smoked salmon. Got some locks. <laughs> also, look how cute it is with Goofy, like, in the tile work. Oh, He's the entire, like... Cooking away. The settings of all of this are really, really adorable. <gasps> Deviled eggs. Oh, man. I'm about to eat so much. As Alan already pointed out, here is your clam chowder and oatmeal. And then on this buffet, you've got kind of your classic breakfast foods, sausage, bacon, eggs, potatoes, um, eggs, Benny. And then there is a made to order omelet yeah, station. An omelet station. And then a thing I should point out is unlike at Disney World, where a lot of the buffets are the same on both sides, it's different. So on this side, you've got a little bit more of the lunchy options. You've got veggies, pasta, rice, chicken teriyaki, chilaquiles, and then 
biscuits and gravy. Yeah. This section is the kids' buffet. You can tell that because it's a little bit shorter than the others, but anybody is welcome to have it. Included here, you have Mickey Mouse pancakes, French toast. It looks to be a delicious. Oh my God. Is this like jalapenos and stuff in the eggs? Yeah, Yum. It's like a Southwestern style egg situation. I'm here for that. The famous Mickey waffles, chicken tenders, if you want those like me, and then mac and cheese. Okay. <laughs> you can also grab pizza, and the selection is incredible. You have cheese pizza, chicken and waffle chicken pizza. Chicken and waffle yeah, coming pizza. Coming back for that. Steak and eggs pizza. And look at it here. The world famous peanut butter and jelly pizza and strawberry Nutella pizza. I dessert love pizza is a win always. I love anywhere with dessert pizza. And here you just have a ton of desserts, including things like bread pudding, cinnamon rolls, lemon bars, apple streusel. That raspberry streusel looks amazing. Pound cake, Dale oh. likes it. Yeah, Dale loves it. Dale loves all of the cookie options that he sees on the other side here. I noticed on the way in that also on the dessert bar, beignets, y'all. This is my favorite place ever. Hey, Dale. Do you have a favorite thing we should try? All, All of it. Nice. Okay, we will do. <laughs> Would you like anything? A hazelnut beignet, perhaps? You like nuts. <laughs> You're very full, I understand. You're very full, you've been eating and working. Did you help cook? Do you help cook? No. Oh, you're the taste tester. I gotcha. I gotcha. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> you want some worms and dirt? I kind of do want worms and dirt just to feel like a kid again. All right, let me dream. And last but not least, they have a full ice cream bar and a yogurt bar. So let's eat. Coffee, tea, juice, soda included, like most character dining experiences. And then they also have a list of beer, wine, as well as some specialty cocktails and mimosas if you'd like to be a little fancier. I was also told they have specialty coffees if you want to be a little fancier. But Alan, please walk us through your first plates, plural. plural. Yes, we have a Caesar salad because we're healthy in this house. Yes, we care about health. True. And in that same spirit, four pieces of pizza, mm. two of the chicken and waffles and two of the steak and eggs. We also have the, the children's egg mixture that has peppers and uh, sausage in it, which I mean, <laughs> yes, please. Biscuits and gravy and some chilaquiles. Yum. With some sriracha on top. I went for a savory platter to start with. I'm gonna go back for a more b sweet breakfast platter, but I also got pizza, chilaquiles, salad for health. I obviously couldn't pass up some charcuterie. Wanted to try the macaroni and cheese as well as the tomato pasta from the adult section. Can't wait. Hi, Pluto! Hello, Pluto! Look how cute you are! There's all our friends, they're watching you. <laughs> they should come visit, huh? Yeah! Have you, did, Goofy yeah hello. Give, did Goofy give you any of his food? Did you get any snacks this Not morning? Not yet today. <laughs> no. You better sneak a few waffles. Yeah. <laughs> you want some chilaquiles? I don't know one. if dogs can eat that. It might be a little... Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take oh, a picture? Of course, of course, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a beautiful <laughs> that's a picture, Pluto. Here we are. Oh, what a great photo! What a great photo. Yep. <laughs> Alan, first round done. Highlight and low light on your plate. Highlight is the pizza. Both the steak and egg and the chicken and waffle pizza were good. I was most surprised by the chicken and waffle pizza being good because of the sweet and salty. And we have Dale back. Oh my gosh! Hi, Dale! <laughs> How are you? You look great. Is this a new outfit? A little bow tie? The vest so is really what brings snazzy. it together. Yeah. Such a fancy chipmunk. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah, pizza. The yeah. chicken and waffles was most surprising. The steak and eggs was always. I, yeah, I liked the steak and eggs better. Yeah. Low light. Listen, goofy. Your gravy, pretty good. Pretty good salmon gravy from the southern. The biscuit, though, offends me. Wow. It was. It was like I was eating a cake. <laughs> For the record, Goofy, as someone who didn't grow up with a Southern grandmother, I thought the biscuit was decent. Are you lying to yourself? I thought the biscuit was not offensive. What? But I didn't think it was great. Wait a Biscuits could use some work, but 
he's more mad about the biscuit than me. Okay, biscuits are decent. I retracted that, and I said they didn't offend me. There's a difference. Uh-huh. I would say my high... <laughs> Y'all, that's happened four times. The birthday, the birthday clapper. It's everyone's birthday. Everybody gets a birthday. You get a birthday. Everyone does get a birthday, but they're all here right now. Um, I would say the highlight for me were the chilaquiles. They had, the chips were great. They were nice and thick to hold up to all the toppings. Lots of queso fresco. Love the fresh jalapenos. There was also some actual heat in the sauce. That's going to haunt my dreams. It is going to live rent-free in my mind and heart forever. <laughs> there was actual some heat in the sauce, which you don't often see on a buffet because they're playing to everyone. So normally at Disney World buffets, there's nothing actually spicy, especially not in the character buffet. <laughs> that is a new instrument. There's a new shaker. <laughs> anyway, the chilaquiles were my highlight. Um, I would say... Not that it was bad, but I probably wouldn't get the mac and cheese again. It was good, and I think kids will like it, but it wasn't anything spectacular, and I'd rather save room for something else. Speaking of, Mickey Waffle. Oh. My. God. It's loud in here. If you're overstimulated by loud noises, this is not the restaurant for you. <laughs> Listen, we're putting these new mics to the test. I'm telling you that much. Hey. So many clackers. Oh, that's nice. So I got a mijalada. It's very, very good. Um, I mean, it's, it is a Modelo with Bloody Mary mix and a tahini rim. You have to like tomato juice. You have to like Bloody Marys in order to enjoy this. But the beer makes it nice and light. Very refreshing and a little spicy. I like that. And I decided that my two beverages were not enough, so I added four more. <laughs> And I got the mimosa flight and I asked them for less juice and the server brought it. She's like, normally these are a lot more full and a lot more uh, dense. And now you can see through them. She goes, they look really good now. So I'm hoping they're delicious. Uh, there's only one problem. The problem is I don't know which flavors which. They're supposed to be raspberry, pomegranate, peach, and orange, I think. So we're going to just, just find out right now. That's classic orange. And man, they crushed it barely juice in there. These are nice. Pomegranate raspberry. Raspberry is the sweetest one so far, but so far all of them are very good and very light, which would make this one peach. Yep. Ooh, peach is definitely has that sweet peach flavor, but because they put so little of the juice in it, I really like that because I like peach, but it's normally too sweet. Um, I would award these... Number one, pomegranate. Number two, peach. Number three, orange. Number four, raspberry. Hi, Minnie. Oh, my gosh. You look so beautiful. I love your apron and your shoes and a cupcake. You are just the cutest ever. Did you bake any of this stuff? You did? Oh, yeah. You made the cupcakes and the treats. They look delicious. We just got a whole bunch. Yeah, I went to your house yesterday and I saw that your fridge is just cheese. And I like that because that's what my fridge looks like too. <laughs> three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Alan, walk us through your sweet plate. We have, before you chef, the peanut butter and jelly pizza, two slices because I can't be tamed, a Mickey waffle because you have to have it, an apple fritter, a lemon bar, a hazelnut spread beignet, and for health, a bran muffin. Oh, that's adorable. Thank you, Chip. All right, Malls, talk us through it. First of all, I did get worms and dirt, which I have not had since I was a child, and I want to feel like a child. I got both the peanut butter. <clears throat> I also got both the peanut butter and jelly, but also 
the chocolate strawberry dessert pizzas. I went for the fruit beignets, some bread pudding, some cinnamon roll, a Mickey waffle, and a mozzarella stick. This is a sweet plate, right? Yeah, but they put out mozzarella sticks which went out earlier, and who am I to turn down a mozzarella stick? It's <laughs> against the rules. Yeah. Oh. Uncle Marvel's. Mm -hmm. That was an apple bar. Delicious. Mmm. Yeah. That was great. Try the bread pudding. Mm, that is not a good cinnamon roll. That's a lemon bar. Mm. Bread pudding's not great either. I didn't have a lot of hope for the bread pudding, and I was right to not have a lot of hope for the bread pudding. Yes. Not for a beignet. Here's the problem. It's not hot. I think it's going to be like a donut and I'm scared. Mmm, like a waffle. It's like a donut. Mmm, <laughs> bran. <laughs> this is just chocolate pudding with Oreos on it, but it's good. And I saved the best for last. All right. That's no business being that good. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. Dessert plate complete, high and low. Well, the high has got to be the peanut butter and jelly pizza. Obviously. That is no business being that good. And it is. Um, the low light for me, not, I don't think anything on this plate was bad, bad. Um, and I know you're all like, brand muffin. No, that was actually tasty. And I'm approximately a thousand, so it fed my adult soul. It was a lemon bar. Mm. It was just kind of mid. It took a while for the lemon flavor to hit. So, yeah, I want to be punched right in the face with lemon. What about for you, Molly? <laughs> What's your highlight and low light? Well, my low light is that donut hole masquerading as a beignet. What a dishonest dessert. That's not a beignet. That's a donut. There's no world where that is a beignet. Alan? Do you no, it's a donut. It's a donut. It's a donut hole shoved with either fruit or hazelnut spread. As someone who loves beignets and hates donuts, I'm offended. My feelings were hurt by that thing. I'm sorry, you were offended? It was dishonest. My highlight... Also, the peanut butter and jelly pizza, but I want to shout out the Nutella and strawberry pizza. It's a lot like the Nutella and strawberry waffle in Magic Kingdom. Delicious. Um, also, you can't go wrong with a Mickey waffle. The malted powder they use in the Mickey waffles makes them the best waffles in the whole wide world. And you know what? Special shout out to the mozzarella stick. <laughs> yeah, what a sweet treat that is. It tasted like a generic mozzarella. That will literally haunt me for all time. It tasted like a generic mozzarella stick, but you know what? I like a generic mozzarella stick. Just wrapped breakfast at Goofy's Kitchen. It was delightful. Yeah, it was nice. I miss the random characters, though. That's true. When we came here many years ago, it was like Blue. I think Mulan yeah, was Mulan here. Yeah, Mulan was there. We also had... The consistency is Chip. Yeah, Chip but not Dale was here last time. It, that was very odd. If you want the random smorgasbord of characters in Disneyland, the plaza, I went there with my family last week and we had Minnie, Chip and Dale, Pluto, but also Susie the Mouse. Without Perla. And Max Goof and Tigger. So, random. But yeah. it's kind of your more classic characters here, which is always fun. The food is pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's better than your, quote, average, unquote, sort of Disney breakfast experience. Yeah, I think it's definitely better than somewhere like Chef Mickey's. And even as we were leaving, they were putting new food out. They had put grilled salmon out. Of course, they added those amazing mozzarella sticks. So I think <laughs> this is definitely a great brunch option. Maybe get to the park early, do that early park entry. If you're staying at a resort, rope drop, do some stuff, and then come over here. Because anyone can come eat here. You don't have to be staying at Disneyland Hotel to eat at Goofy's Kitchen and then uh, head back to the park. Like we're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna take the monorail. Security was fast and efficient, and now we are headed to the monorail platform. A very unique thing about Disneyland's monorail versus Disney World's is that there's only two stations here in downtown Disney and then in Tomorrowland. And it's a one-way trip, so you have to have a ticket to board it. 
One thing I want to say about Disneyland is between the music at Chef Goofy's or Goofy's Kitchen and Downtown Disney slaps. Are we listening to Illumination? end of Illumination? Yeah, We Go On is playing right now. All right, my heart is not ready for this at this hour of day. Five seconds ago, they were playing the Magic Happens Parade soundtrack. At breakfast, they were playing like the Disney Mania versions of Oh, it was a, it was a great remix situation. It's like a, at one point there was a remix of Grim Grinning Ghosts. This is so fun. Oh, it's the cool Mickey monorail. It's Mickey oh. through the years. Oh, we love so it. Are we obviously cool. going to the old side? Look how cute these cars are. Obviously we're going classic Mickey, right? Yeah, Steamboat Willie Mickey. These are so different. Whoa. I feel very big. Yeah, me too. My head just hit. so fun first time on the monorail and it's amazing what a great view of the park that was so cool also weird that you see like the literal not disney parks like it really reminds you that disneyland is next to a major road with non-disney businesses yeah okay let's talk about the resort stay first and foremost if you are a lover of disney memorabilia and nostalgia like we are uh, that's it's hard to beat there at the Disneyland Hotel. That was certainly my favorite thing. Plus, of course, I love the addition of Trader Sam's and the Terrace. The food was great. Goofy's Kitchen was great. However, I would say if you're not planning on doing some nice resort days, then this maybe isn't the hotel for you. One, it's not the closest. If you want a Disney hotel, both Grand Californian and Paradise Pier, which is being transformed into Pixar Pier, are closer. There's also a ton of good neighbor hotels that are a lot less expensive and still closer than the Disneyland Hotel. So I think you really have to want to do a resort day um, and spend time there if you want to stay there. That said, I loved it and I will certainly be back. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Comfiest sleep I've ever had. And Probably the headboard. Bad. Ooh, yeah, the headboard. And the pool. And the monorail slides. And Trader Sam's. Again, got to say it twice. It's, it's so fun. You have to say it twice. It's that good. We do have other Disneyland trips planned this year. So if you'd like to see more of the staycations, Grand Californian, certainly Paradise Pier when it becomes Pixar Pier. I can't wait to be there. Maybe the DVC rooms at Disneyland Ooh. Hotel. Let us know what you want to see down in the comments. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new and follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to engage with us directly, join us on Discord. All the links down below. Yes, come to our Discord. That's where we talk about a lot of travel logistics and planning. We talk about other hotels we've stayed at. You can ask people in the Man Fam those yeah. questions too. All right. Well, I'm ready to go have some fun in Disneyland. Absolutely. <laughs> Until next time, friends. I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Bye. Bye.